this trustworthy guy, Dr. Carl? He is a guy who is spending his time communing with his inner self by looking at the heavens and making wonderful discoveries of asteroids. He's discovered 36 comets that take a long time to get around, a bunch that take a short time to loop through the solar system. He's worked with many people sharing the glory to do discoveries with them. And in fact, he holds the record of, as a comet counter up to 72. He is so good that he has actually had his own body named after him, 3173 McNaught, is named in his honour. Okay, and so is this an image here of 3173 McNaught moving through space? Uh, okay, so these are photos taken <coughs> one day apart. Mm -hmm. Very far out, very weird body. Is it mine? We don't know. And you see everything else is stationary except for this one here, which turns out to be 18412 Krushelnitsky. Ah. Now this is not... This is not, Adam, I'd like to point out, you bore, you know, you are, you're fake, pay $10 and have a star named after you, okay. or buy one square metre of moon. This is real. This is on the NASA JPL homepage, and under the small body database browser, here you can see, look at that, 18412 Krushelnitsky 1993LX, that is my fabulous little asteroid, and here you can see in a wonderful orbit going between uh, Mars and Jupiter, here it comes going around, taking five years to do an orbit, and um, here is a picture, a movie of an asteroid, this is, um, is, it, this is... This is your asteroid? Well, no. Um, this is an asteroid called Vesta, it's about a thousand kilometres across. That one's a thousand kilometres across. How big is yours? Oh, 25 metres or so. <laughs> Maybe a bit smaller. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so it's not that big. But getting back to McNaught, he, here it is. Why did he do this? It says over here, Robert McNaught, 18412 Krushelnitsky, uh, because I do all this stuff on the talkback radio with Zan, been a regular, one of the sleek geeks comedy science duo. Mm -hmm. Whoa, thank mm -hmm. you. But one thing bothers me, Adam. He discovered this in 1993, and yet he waited 19 years until 2012 before he named it after me. And I don't know what's going wrong. Maybe it's that old thing that it only takes 30 years to become an overnight success, because I've been on Triple J, mm -hmm. I've been on Double J. Mm -hmm. I was on, when it was a single J, and it was just me shouting really loudly in somebody's backyard. Mm -hmm. That's how far back it goes. And in fact, late last year, yeah, they surprised me by wheeling into the studio as a surprise present for me for my 30 years on radio, a, sh a cake in the shape of my favorite organ, the uterus. Why is the uterus your favourite organ, Carl? Two reasons. Number one, we all come from it. It starts off the size of a clenched fist and expands big enough to ex hold a whole baby and then comes down again. And during the average uh, pregnancy is delivering 300 mils of blood to the baby every minute. That's every minute. And yet in a typical delivery, we'll lose only half a minute's blood supply. That's half, 150 mils. And the second thing is when it shrinks down, it shrinks down without any wrinkles. If it had wrinkles, these would be weak points for the next time it expanded. Mm. So who knows what will happen in the future with skin care for us. But that is another story, Dr. Carl. <laughs> so looking as we were at asteroids out in space. Three, yeah, one, bit beautiful, isn't it? two, three. What, what's that, Adam? It's not 18412 Krufelnitsky. It's 18413 Adam Spencer. <laughs> ah, I've got my own damn. asteroid, Dr. Carl, and I've also got our good friend, Mr. McNaught, to thank for it. 18413, a prime number, I'm sure you'll ah, notice, damn. has its own little orbit out here in between towards Jupiter. This orbit of mine's actually taken just today, Carl, far more ah. up to date than yours. But this site is amazing. It takes the observations of these interstellar, these um, beautiful objects out in space and gives you all the data you want to fully describe your asteroid. Here's just a few of the things mine compared to Carl. Let's walk through some of them and compare our asteroids. The first thing you'll notice is the eccentricity. What is eccentricity? Well, it was Kepler who showed that the orbits of bodies in space aren't perfect circles. They tend to be elliptical. Now, an ellipse is a circle that's been squashed a bit, and its eccentricity is a measure of how squashed that circle is. So a perfect circle has eccentricity of zero. A slightly squashed circle 
very close to fully circular ellipse has eccentricity of 0.1. As the eccentricity gets larger and larger up towards the number one, the circle gets more and more squashed, flatter and flatter. Your eccentricity is 0 0.08. Pretty boring, pretty bland, very circular, very predictable. Mine is one radical dude of an asteroid just out there winging around in an ellipse. I pick mine. Well, you might be more edgy, but I'm more reliable. Oh my God, that's so shameful. <laughs> Let's compare our semi-major axes. Now, when you've got an ellipse, the semi-major axis is a measure of how far that part of the ellipse, the longest part of the orbit is compared to that. You'll see that yours and mine, well, to be honest, they are virtually identical when it comes to semi-major axes. When it comes to the longitude of the ascending node... The what? What, what is the longitude of the ascending node? I don't actually know, Carl, but mine smashes <laughs> yours. Look at that. And when it comes to the period they take to execute their orbit, they are about the same. Now, Carl and I, we're good friends, but we're both pretty competitive. The moment we found out that we each had our own asteroid, we got out the data, we compared the numbers. I think my asteroid's better than Carl's. He thinks his is better than mine. There's only one way we can resolve this. We need someone to judge this for us. Unfortunately, Seal was not available <laughs> to come along this evening. He's off hanging out somewhere in a white suit. But Carl, we have someone here tonight who can make that judgment. We have a man who is the Seal, the Keith Urban, wow. the Delta Goodrum of celestial bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, presented with the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2011. Give a big round of applause. Professor Brian Schmitz here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Brian, stand Yay. up. Oh. We are going to make him earn his keep tonight because if there's anyone in this room who can look at the data on two different asteroids and be more naturally drawn towards one, who is it, Brian? Is it my crazy eccentricity versus Carl's predictability? Is it my slightly larger semi-major axes? Is it Carl's smaller longitude of ascending node? Which of those two asteroids reaches out to you? Well, uh, it's a tough call, but uh, I noticed that uh, in one of the facts you didn't show that yours is a little bigger than Carl's. Mm. So, but we know bigger doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> but I also noticed that your higher eccentricity means you're faster. Mm -hmm. And that's a real bad thing. Ah. So I, I'm inclined, along with Dr. Carl's inclination being higher, to go with Dr. Carl on this one. Yes! Yes! Okay. Cop that! Thank you very much, Brian. Yes! Thank you.